All right, memory is supposed to be like a mental hard drive, right? You experience something, you store it away, and then, years later, you pull it up exactly as it happened. That's how it's supposed to work, at least. But if that's the case, why is your memory about as reliable as a politician's promise? We need to build a wall. Why do you remember your high school days as if you were the star of some coming-of-age movie, when in reality, you were probably just lurking in the background, sneaking snacks and avoiding eye contact? Memory is weird, man, and it turns out it's built to be inaccurate, so let's see why. First, we need to talk about encoding, the first step in the memory process. Encoding is like when you download something off the internet, but instead of grabbing the full quality HD version, you somehow end up with a pixelated 240p file. Your brain doesn't download every single detail of a memory. Instead, it grabs the gist of the experience. If you went to a birthday party, your brain's like, all right, there was cake, there were people, we had fun, good enough. Why? Well, processing every detail would take up too much brain power, and your mind's kind of lazy. It has better things to do, like worrying about whether you locked the front door or not. So instead of storing everything, it takes a shortcut, grabs some highlights, and then fills in the gaps later when you try to remember it. Convenient, right? Except that filling in the gaps part is where things go hilariously wrong. See, your brain doesn't just store memories, it edits them. It's like that friend who can't tell a story without embellishing it a little bit. Your brain wants your memories to make sense, to fit into the larger story of you. So it starts fudging the details to create a smooth narrative. This is called memory consolidation, and it happens every time you revisit a memory. Imagine you're remembering that one time you went camping with friends. The first time you recall it, it's mostly accurate, mostly being the keyword here. But then every time you tell the story, you add a little detail here, exaggerate a part there, until suddenly, years later, it's a tale of you wrestling a bear in the woods when, in reality, you just saw a raccoon rifling through the trash. Your memory is less like a video recording and more like a Wikipedia article. Anyone, including you, can go in and make edits at any time. Let's talk about flashbulb memories. These are those super vivid memories we all have, usually from traumatic or really significant events. People remember exactly where they were on September 11th, or when they heard shocking news. You'd think these would be the most reliable memories, right? Wrong. Studies have shown that these flashbulb memories are no more accurate than any other memory. Sure, they feel more intense because of the emotions attached to them, but that doesn't make them more reliable. In fact, the strong emotions might actually mess them up more. Emotions crank up the storytelling part of your brain, so when you recall these events, it's like someone's playing dramatic background music, which only makes the brain even more prone to distorting the facts. So, yeah, that super vivid memory of your friend's birthday when they got a dog? It's probably wrong. Ever heard of false memories? Turns out, it's it's insanely easy to plant memories in people's heads. Psychologists have done experiments where they tell people they did something in their childhood, like, say, meeting Bugs Bunny at Disneyland, even though Bugs is a Warner Bros. character and has no business being at Disneyland. A significant number of people will go, oh yeah, I remember that, and even start adding details. The mind doesn't just accept suggestions, it welcomes them with open arms and even offers them coffee. Why? Because your brain is always trying to make sense of stuff. When someone suggests a memory to you, your brain's like, hmm, I don't remember that, but it sounds plausible. Let's just throw it in there. It's like having a super gullible intern in your brain that just believes anything it hears. This is also why eyewitness testimony in court is notoriously unreliable. Just a small suggestion can make people remember things that never happened with complete confidence. Humans were nothing if not suggestible. You'd think that when you're remembering something, your brain would activate areas related to storing information, like some kind of internal filing cabinet. But no, studies show that the same parts of your brain that light up when you imagine something are also active when you remember something. In other words, remembering is basically a form of creative writing. You're not just pulling up a mental video file. You're recreating the event, with your brain filling in gaps along the way. This explains why memories can be so wildly different between people. One person remembers the wedding as the best day ever, while someone else swears it was a disaster. Both people are technically right, because they're both recreating their own unique versions of the event. And frankly, both are probably wrong in some way. So, there you have it. Your memory isn't the perfect, reliable archivist you thought it was. It's more like a messy artist, always changing things up, adding dramatic flair, and deleting the boring bits. It's inaccurate by design because, well, it doesn't need to be accurate. It just needs to make you feel something, to help you make sense of your life, and to keep you from walking into traffic. So next time you're in a heated argument about what happened at that party years ago, just remember, you're both probably wrong, and that's okay. Embrace the chaos, let your hippocampus take a breather, and enjoy the fact that life is just one big, beautiful mess of half-remembered moments.